Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Wednesday, October 13, 2010. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London. In Hamilton, it's 12.30 and in Mexico City, 10.30. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. Lady Margaret Thatcher is 85 years old today, the former British Prime Minister. And also the American songwriter uh, Paul Simon, from Simon and Garfunkel fame, as well as uh, significant fame on his own, is 69. Well, if you were awake last night, uh, you saw these, these, these videos. We're going to show you the uh, first minor coming up. Here we go. This truly is, uh, is just amazing. Uh, as of right now, uh, 15 of the 33 minors have been safely rescued. Uh, so that means there are 18 more plus the rescue worker who went down uh, last night. So there's 19 more people that have to be brought to the surface. It's a time of great joy and thanks in Chile. Uh, the president of Chile, President Pinero, was on the site uh, for most of the day yesterday, as he has been for much of the uh, previous 12 weeks. So uh, it's truly an amazing feat, one of those rare instances where uh, uh, a national, international effort in this case has worked to produce some very good results. So hopefully everything will continue to go safely. Well, now to our news. Hurricane Paula is rumbling around off of uh, the Mexican coast in the Atlantic. It hit Cancun uh, earlier this morning without any immediate reports of major damage, and now it's veering out over uh, western Cuba's uh, cigar-producing area. The storm has winds of about 100 miles per hour. It uh, was about 55 miles east of Cancun at dawn today. The U.S. Uh, hurricane service said that it's expected to shift to the northeast and weaken slightly on a path that would take it into western Cuba by sometime tonight. There are no immediate reports of any damage. Uh, the Mexican government is saying that they can guarantee the security of all 27,000 tourists currently in Cancun. One person whose safety cannot be guaranteed, and we'll go ahead and do this, uh, is an American man who drowned when he went swimming in the heavy surf with a 100-mile-an-hour hurricane coming. He ignored warnings and red flags. His name was Mickey Goodwin. He was a 54-year-old Texas resident, dead. Something that's going to end up in uh, those uh, news of the weird, stupid things. Well, in Iran, 18 Revolutionary Guardsmen were killed in an explosion this morning at a Revolutionary Guards military base in the northwest part of the country. Apparently, it was some sort of ammunition dump that exploded when fire uh, uh, spread to the uh, to the base. It's located about 500 kilometers southwest of uh, Tehran. Now, uh, this is something that uh, is presumably going to be blamed on the Kurdish uh, separatist movement that is operating in northwestern Iran. Meanwhile, in Beirut, the president of Iran, President Ahmadinejad, arrived to a euphoric welcome. Uh, mainly uh, being produced by Hassan Nasrallah and the Hezbollah forces, who of course are recipients of encouragement and aid and uh, all sorts of positive things from Tehran. So uh, it's causing quite a bit of commotion over there because Lebanon obviously is a, uh, a tripartite kind of state with Shia, Sunni, and Christians. So we'll see how that shakes out. Well, in France, we know how that's shaking out, and you do too if you're there. Massive, massive strikes are ongoing again. The uh, Transport Workers Union, which is probably the strongest union in France, is flexing its muscles. This is after as many as three and a half million people marched yesterday in a nationwide protest. Uh, the unions have voted to extend a rail strike as well as blockading supplies from oil refineries. Uh, it's going to bring fuel shortages to the French motorists because it's knocking out all but 30 percent of French oil refining capacity. The union head says we're hardening our stance. The president of France, Nicolas Sarkozy, indicates that he's hardening his stance on uh, his proposal to raise the retirement age from 60 to 62. Um, this is not going to be solved anytime soon. Well, J.P. Morgan Chase came out with big news. Here's Jamie Dimon. 
He's the CEO. He said that the third quarter profit at the nation's second biggest bank jumped 23%. Uh, he said that the reason was that they were still able to set aside $1.55 billion to cover losses in its retail financial services division, and that's less than about $4 billion in loss provisions that they recorded a year ago. Uh, the bank expects that uh, losses in the credit card division are going to fall next quarter. J.P. Morgan earned $4.4 billion, or $1.01 1 cent a share. Estimates from analysts had been at $0.90 cents a share, so they blew right through that. The stock market is uh, very positive. It's up about 103 points right now. There's another reason the stock market's up. And I, I had to read this twice, but they're up because this next story is signaling to the stock market that China is going to have the strength to lead the worldwide recovery. Well, if this story is any indication, no kidding. The foreign exchange reserves of China have now surged to a record $2.65 trillion at the end of September. Currency holdings rose about $194 billion in the third quarter. This is according to the People's Bank of China. Exports for September were at their second highest ever at $145 billion. U.S. Treasury Secretary Geithner suggested yesterday in a speech that China's policy of buying dollars to hold down the yuan is distorting the global currency system by forcing other market nations to intervene. In the latest sign of international tension, the Japanese said today that China uh, should take responsible actions in regards to its exchange rates. Japan's intervention in currency markets with the yen last month brought criticism from policymakers in Europe and the U.S., so they're returning the favor. Um, the IMF meeting in Washington last weekend uh, came out with a little bit of a uh, tepid statement saying that uh, countries, with, uh, countries are relying on cheaper currencies to aid growth and thus are risking retaliatory devaluations. Uh, China, of course, has been accused of undervaluing the yuan and uh, flooding emerging, mar emerging markets with capital. Of course, the big uh, shoot yet to drop is what's going to happen when the inevitable inflation hits the United States and the dollar becomes devalued. All of a sudden, that two plus trillion dollars in change is going to drop, drop, drop. Stock market is not drop, drop. It's up at about 104 now. We'll go to a word from our sponsors. Every day, the world wakes up and goes to work, pursuing the unique opportunities that lead the global economy forward. The complexity and close connectivity of today's global marketplace is a true modern miracle that can create unparalleled success. But it takes confidence, passion, innovation, and understanding. Enabling opportunity. Protecting capital. Engineering innovation. Investing in your future. Ensuring continuity. Finding the right balance. It takes Aeon. Mm, three seconds. Oh. 
Mike McGavick, uh, the former Republican Senate uh, candidate from the state of Washington, as well as the current CEO and chairman of XL Capital, made a speech yesterday down in Bermuda. And this is from an article in the uh, Royal Gazette from Hamilton by our friend Jonathan Kent. Mr. McGavick said that the regulatory backlash from the world financial crisis could curb the ability of the international reinsurance industry to do its job. Uh, Mr. McGavick said that the Solvency II regulations that will raise capital requirements for European Union insurers would have negative implications for the industry globally. He also said that the story of human progress was one of trial and error. He said that the reinsurance industry allowed more risk to be taken and thus more progress to be made. He said that the rise in regulation for the industry was a negative trend. Quote, it was not the insurance and reinsurance industry that gave us the financial crisis. Overwhelmingly, it has been a stabilizing force in the economy. McGavick said, quote, many regulators I've spoken with have misunderstood the lesson of the crisis. They think the lesson is to increase capital requirements. He went on to say, but we should not be learning the lessons of the failures of the banks and applying those lessons to insurers. We should instead be applying the lessons of the insurers that were successful to the banking industry. Solvency II, which is due to take effect at the start of 2013, would almost certainly raise the quantity of capital that insurers need to do business. Gavick said, I see this as very threatening to the ability of the industry to fulfill its role. Well, he's not the last, nor is he the first voice to be uh, heard on that, all saying the same thing. Klaus von Baumhardt has been saying the same thing from Munich Re now for about 10 months. We'll see if uh, any of it gets through. The American broker Integro has apparently now begun to step into reinsurance. They acquired a California reinsurance brokerage uh, called Resource Intermediaries, the privately held company based in San Francisco. It's a uh, health and life reinsurance company. And Integro, uh, in the person of Peter Garvey, about six months ago, indicated that the company was on the lookout for uh, nice fit acquisitions. So presumably this is one of them. Here's an interesting story from Matthew Brodsky, uh, editor of Risk and Insurance magazine. It's uh, spotting an oft-overlooked little aspect of the Aon Hewitt personnel deal. Now that that almost $5 billion merger is complete, the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, who had introduced a little rule a while back, are going to begin to make their presence felt. Companies that use Hewitt as a compensation consultant for their compensation committee or management, and who also use Aon as their insurance broker, might now be required to disclose exactly how much they pay Aon in brokerage fees. Let me make sure I say that again. They would be required, may be required, to divulge exactly how much they pay Aon in brokerage fees. That would be like unprecedented information. The move could cause public corporations that use both Aon and Hewitt services to take certain corporate governance actions, such as considering and clarifying potential conflicts of interest. The rule is just one part of a new SEC guideline that became effective on February 28th of this year. It was intended to facilitate investors' consideration of whether in providing advice a compensation consultant might have been influenced by a desire to retain other engagements by the company. Yeah. The situation that Aon clients now confront is no different than what Marsh and Mercer Consulting have been uh, facing now for a number of years. Uh, they seem to have solved the problem. Uh, it appears, though, that many companies have decided to move away from such a, uh, a global uh, one-stop servicing of uh, personnel consultants, risk consultants, and the like, and moving toward boutique personnel consultancies to avoid these disclosure requirements. This is according to Doug Frisk at Towers Watson. The new SEC rules go a step further and could, in fact, end up with a situation where big companies are beginning to divulge the commissions that they're paying to the world's largest insurance broker. That could be very interesting, and I'm wondering uh, whether or not uh, that was an issue that was spotted uh, before the Hewitt acquisition was made. That would be a very interesting thing to learn.